All right, so this is yet another episode of the um, Objective Cologne podcast. Uh, and uh, this one, I really couldn't miss it because I was reminded uh, for the call uh, with this uh, nice uh, little guy here. I have to look at the, the correct uh, thing. So I got my uh, Apple Watch yesterday. So uh, it's funny enough when I turn it. Uh, and it says I actually call with Robin on Skype. Uh, so hi, Robin. So can you introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Robin Hauser Reynolds, and I'm a director of the documentary film Code, Debugging the Gender Gap. And I'd like to know how I get one of those Apple Watches. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's uh, it's actually easy. You have to live in Germany, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then exactly. you have to, well, actually, you know, we actually have a a, a good um, advantage, I would say, because we could order at 9 a.m. Um, it's actually very convenient not to have to stay awake at like. Uh, Best case, midnight, worst case, 3 a.m. Right. Uh, for people in New York. Um, so thank you, Apple. I mean, so I could order at like nine, seven past nine or something like that. Friends of mine at <laughs> two past nine. And so it, it ends up, we, are, we, we got that thing at like on April 24th. Uh, and to be honest with you, I would have never uh, thought that it would come on day one. No, I think that's fabulous. Listen, I was planning on maybe spending the night outside the Apple, you know, the headquarters, but uh, I'm at Tribeca at the film festival. That was a little yeah. bit more important for us. So. Well, yeah, whatever. Just wait a little bit and then you'll have your one. I'm going to try not to, to, to show it too much because uh, it, I know it's going to put people crazy for those who don't have it already. Yeah, I like your choice of color. Yeah. Well. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. It's it's a very <laughs> it's a very brave color, I would say. Uh, but uh, you know what? My car is the same color. Uh, it's it's not a secret for anybody who knows me, which I that I'm a member of the Green Party here in in, in Germany. So everything is green in my life. Um, I should have put I should have put the the green co uh, objective cologne T-shirt uh, today. Anyway, uh, <laughs> let's move on to um, to you actually and to your uh, documentary. Uh, I'm trying to remember the way I we got in touch. I think I basically uh, had backed up uh, backed your uh, so crowdfunded your um, your documentary, and so I got in touch with you about uh, a possible screening. And then you all of a sudden told me, I'm seeing you don't have a lot of uh, female speakers. <laughs> yes, that's right. I was giving you a little bit of a hard time about that. But believe me, you're not the only one, right? Yeah. I mean, this is something that happens fairly often. It's pretty common, really. Yeah. But again, as I told you, it's not like I hadn't tried. I had already tried, to be honest. I counted a while ago, like six or seven different. Uh, last year, we had a, a female speaker. And so this year, uh, I was super happy that we could finally make it happen so that you are going to come in Cologne and not even alone. Producer Stacey Hartman will be traveling with me and we're, we're looking forward to coming. It's uh, Anytime we have the opportunity to speak about the gender gap in technology, we're excited to do so. We'll be heading to Berlin afterwards, speaking there yeah. and speaking in Dublin before. But I, um, I think that the you know, it'll be interesting, and I look forward to meeting your audience and, and the people that are um, joining your conference. It's it's interesting to me that, um, well, of course, this is something we know, that this is not just an American problem, right? This is a problem um, across Europe and Scandinavia and uh, pretty much everywhere at the exception of maybe India and China. Oh, really? That's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, and I've also heard that Poland seems to graduate quite a few um, women computer scientists, so I think in in well, Poland, that, for some reason, they're doing a good job. Well, there, there you go. Poland is not very far away from uh, from Germany, so all the Polish uh, female developers come to Objective Cologne. Uh, well, that's good. Let's get them over. That's yeah. right. You can do what you can. So the way we're going to do this is uh, we are going to uh, do a private screening So uh, at Objective Cologne of the documentary, uh, which is in itself already uh, worth paying, <laughs> paying the price of the ticket because apparently it's... Uh, uh, the documentary is not screening everywhere in, in Europe, like uh, it's only starting in the US, right? Well, yeah, and the documentary right now is just on the film festival circuit, so um, corporations are paying a lot of money if they want a private screening. And um, it was always, for us, it was one of our um, objectives uh, to screen it to festivals, um, to screen it at conferences, but to, you know, to get the word out within the industry first. Mm -hmm. um, what's been surprising is we, we've had sort of a media storm since we, we just had our world premiere a, a, you know, a week ago exactly. And um, since then we've been on you know, crazy uh, press tour and uh, we've received so much 
attention that's been really exciting for us. Um, I think it really surprised me that this is also reaching across other industries. So people are realizing, I mean, women are getting very passionate about this in law offices as well and um, in the VC companies and stuff. So it's not just, you know, uniquely a tech problem. But, but, but what we concentrate on in the documentary is that it's tech. Yeah. Um, but I think anyway, just to say that it's, it's really special for you. Oops, you back? No, I'm back, I'm back. It's, it's very special um, for, for Objective that, that you're going to get a private screening of this because it can't be seen just anywhere. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, you even got uh, somebody from Germany uh, today uh, get in touch with you with the very simple question, where can we see that in Germany? Um, yeah, and, and I'll, exactly, and, and I think that's maybe the third or fourth inquiry from, from Germany we've gotten. So um, it's, it's very interesting to me that... Um, that I mean that the story is reaching that our story you know our documentary is reaching that far we're getting inquiries from Australia and uh, yeah. Taiwan the other day it's crazy yeah I mean we kind of everybody knows the problem but not a lot of people don't really know how to I would say solve the problem or handle the problem um, from the beginning on here uh, at home I have two daughters uh, and so uh, I'm, I'm trying to get them interested as much as I can in, in technology but to be honest it's not like I should ha interest them in technology it's like the world all around should um, should have them being interested in technology or not for that matter but it should interest them as much or as not as my uh, son actually um, well, that, that's it. But some of it is sort of, so this is why we say that it's very much of a, of a cultural problem. Um, it's, it's stereotypes, right? And, and I can't speak to how this is in Germany, but I can tell you that in the United States, the stereotype is that a coder or a programmer um, is somebody who maybe, you know, wakes up at 12 noon and likes to drink a lot of caffeinated beverages and sort of, you know, grok on algorithms till three in the morning eating stale pizza, you know. I, 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 I stopped coffee a, a couple of months ago, by the way, so I guess I'm not a programmer anymore. How uh, are you doing? Do you have headaches? <laughs> I, I don't have. I mean, I, I, I just uh, basically replaced the coffee at work with water and... Um, so good, I, good I drink man. coffee now and then, just like on occasions, which has the, the, the positive side effects of when I'm drinking coffee, I, I am really, really awake. <laughs> <laughs> so what I've done is I can't drink coffee because I run on a very high octane just naturally. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I make coffee nervous, so I stopped drinking coffee years ago when I stopped being a stockbroker. But um, anyway, I think, yes, what you should do with your girls is buy them gender-neutral toys. There's some great toys out there that are, that are sort of catered toward um, young ages, but for, uh, you know, that... that teach coding without kids really even realizing that they're teaching the fundamentals of coding, coding whether they're sort of the basics of Scratch or something. One of them is called Codable. Okay. Um, it's an online um, program. It's really, it's really a great, um, it's a great software that the kids, it's a game really. Okay. Um, and then there's Little Bits and um, for girls there's Goldie Blocks. But these are, these are games that are, that are created to try to get girls interested in, in giving them a foundation for what it's like mm -hmm. to um, to code you know, yeah, early yeah, on. Yeah. But uh, also anyway, I think that's important. Yeah. Um, so, so the screening is one thing, uh, but the other thing, which is actually the original thing we thought even kind of before the screening, was you giving a talk um, called the same as, as, as the movie, uh, The Gender Gap. Um, and that uh, we, I organized it this way so, so that it's, uh, it's going to be on the, on the next day. So the way it's going to work for the people, so that people understand is the last part of the first day, actually the second day, but it's the first come first day because the very first day is a hack day, um, is actually the, the documentary. And then we have the conference dinner. So that leaves a lot of uh, potential discussions with you and Stacy. Um, and then on the next day, the first talk, you are the first talk. So pr probably lots of people will have slept over uh, thinking about, uh, I, would, I would call it, quote unquote, the problem. And yeah. then you come and you, you speak. So I'm really keen on, on um, seeing what you're actually going to speak about without, uh, I would say, without uh, replay the movie. Yeah, exactly. So it, it depends, right? I mean, the, the, sometimes when I speak about it and people haven't seen the movie, which of course has been most of the time since we just yeah. premiered a week ago, um, we talk about some of our findings, right? What have we found um, that have been that has been so fascinating to us? You know, the fact that it really actually starts somewhat from birth, the way we 
the way the, the stereotype, right? The way we, we treat our boys versus the way we or our sons rather than the way we treat our daughters. Um, and then, uh, so it's a stereotype issue, you know. And then, how do we change the stereotype? Why is it that girls and boys are equally good at mathematics? Um, and then suddenly, as girls become conscious of their, sort of more conscious of their gender and their yeah. role in society, they decide they don't like math because it's not, you know, they stop raising their hands in seventh and eighth grade in co-ed education. They don't want to be the, the smart girl, right? They want to be the cool girl. They want to fit in with the, de with the guys. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? So there's, there's that. Then there's the issue with um, we're not teaching computer science in all U.S. schools, and we should be. Um, it's the it same be. in Germany. If it makes you feel better, yeah, it's, yeah um, right. Well, it's the same in a lot of places. It's, it's, it's terrible. It's not I mean, the situation yeah. is terrible. Like, um, uh, because it's a, it's obviously important to teach them a lot of stuff. And my wife is a teacher, actually. Uh, but I'm always sad that they um, they should teach them basic uh, computer programming because it just helps everybody. Well, well, that's it. I think that this is what we've we've really determined is that moving forward. Um, Technology is here to stay, and it's just going faster. And technology is moving so much faster than academia is in most in most countries, right? Yeah. And um, you know, but academians will tell you, well, where do we fit it in? Is it a mathematics? Is it a language? <laughs> is it a science? And the truth is, according to Megan Smith, who's this chief technology officer of the United States of America, she really believes that it should be integrated into all classes. So okay. there's no reason that it can't be part of your history class, part of your math class. Part, okay. You know, maybe learn the fundamentals in in math class, and then and then incorporate that into what can you build in history class that's going to help you understand or help you move forward with history. So it really should be integrated into all classrooms. Then again, the, the way I see coding a lot of time, um, having learned it myself at um, school, um, is it's a lot of math and a lot of logic. So I'm not really good at math, which is interesting. So every time I have to I have a very complicated math algorithm or remember my basic class stuff. I'm, it, it's a kind of a pain for me. But one thing that got me um, that math when I was studying computer science brought me was uh, thinking more logic. And, and like, I don't, it's hard to explain, but it got me more logical in a coding way. Um, well, no, that's exactly right. So this is what we're hearing. You don't necessarily have to be good at math to be a good coder. I mean, there luckily, are... Yeah, luckily. Well, listen, luckily for, for, for a lot of people. But there's a lot of people that will tell you that if you're good at languages, and obviously your English is very good, if you're good at languages, then chances are you would be good at coding. And um, it, it is logic. It's steps in logic, or it's being able to sort of interpret a different, a different communication level, right? Okay. Um, and so I think that that's, that's a myth that should be debunked. You know, the, the myth that you have to be really good at math, that's one of the things that's probably scaring a lot of people away. And, and the other myth that we try to debunk is that it's not creative. I think yeah. a lot of people think that you're going to be, you know, have to be in isolation, that it's not collaborative, that it's not creative. And in the film, um, you'll see we have Danielle Feinberg from Pixar. And um, she shows how she went to, to Harvard and then she's been at Pixar for 18 years. And she shows that how what she's been doing um, she's the head of photography and animation, okay. and she, her group writes algorithms that control the way that the light shines off of a school of fish in Finding Nemo, or off the way of Merida's hair, the way it bounces in, in the film Brave, that okay. I'm sure you know, some of yeah, your yeah. viewers have seen. I mean, that's fascinating, right? Because that shows people that have this love for art and also this love for computer science that they can put the two together and create amazing things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Um, I don't want to make this too long, so uh, and also, also I don't want to, you to give to, too much away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, it's it's not good for anybody, and especially for the people, because then they they're gonna have amazing conversation with you as well. The one thing that I wanted to emphasize uh, though is is the the amazing amount of press you guys got. Uh, you were pointing me at this uh, codeduck.co slash press website, which with a list of a very long list. Uh, it has to be very, very um, kind of a good feeling for you guys because you've been working on this thing for forever, and then uh, then when you launch it, you don't really know what will happen, and all of a sudden, it, it's kind of a it's it's a storm and a good storm. No, well, that's exactly right. And I have to tell you, first of all, it took us 14 months to make the film, so okay. we actually we have not been working on it forever. We kind of powered through. I mean, it's amazing that we finished it in 14 months. We we practically you know carried the 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 DCP over to Tribeca on our laps. But um, we, um, it's very rewarding to see that, that 
that it's being so well received and that people are so interested. And of course, the timing is everything. Yeah. But I'll tell you that when we started with sort of the research and development on this about 16 months ago, I went into a few startup companies in San Francisco uh, where the CEO said to me, you know, I just, I don't know that this is really that important of an issue. I mean, we don't really care. You know, I mean, what do you... It was somebody said to me, Robin, look, it doesn't matter if the coders are men or women or somewhere in between. We just need coders, right? So he goes, I don't care what they are, who they are, or anything. We just need them to, 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 to code. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that the other thing that it was important for us to really show is why does diversity matter, right? I mean, why does it matter? And um, you'll see in our trailer already, we give the yeah. example of the airbag. But so. so, yes, the press has been incredible. I've been on um, Bloomberg. We're about to do, I'm going to do a radio spot with BBC. Um, we've done uh, The Telegraph, just picked, just did a piece that's going to come out in a week or so. So um, The New Yorker magazine, The Atlantic, San Francisco Chronicle. I mean, we've been, we've been everywhere. It's really fun, really fun. All right. So you've been everywhere, but not so much in, in Europe yet. So and and it's going to come in Europe because you you guys are coming in Europe. Uh, so uh, yeah, I can only encourage people to come and visit us, and obviously a lot of uh, uh, of women to visit us. Um, we would like to have this crowd actually being more diverse. I would say, uh, to use a kind of a normal word. Um, yeah, thank you for being with us and. I can't wait to uh, to see you in Cologne. Uh, every, every, everything is getting ready, right? Yeah, we're getting ready. We're really looking forward to it too. So thank you for um, for including us, for inviting us, and um, we're looking forward to meeting you know all of your attendees. Yeah. So see you soon in uh, in Cologne. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. Thank bye you so bye. much. Cheers. Bye. So yeah, that's a wrap. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's cool. That was cool.